James, last day out for the eight eight. That's her. Two seasons done. Two seasons, all are free to go. And uh, a wee bit of a scramble today because you've had the Torian 14-10 out and we were looking to catch it with you, but with the way the weather had been bad and we were away at the ploughing, you were able to hold on to it for us to get a wee quick look at it today. I'm going to say something here and I'm going to stick my neck out in the line. And I might get a bit of backlash for this, this but it's a very sweet running smooth shovel. As I, oh, that's a real and, nice. I, and I wouldn't just like to give all that credit to Ryan, he's driving her either. No, no. <laughs> the, uh, that's, the shovel, that's why it's smooth. I as well, I tell you the truth, I just to myself, oh, that's fine, I'll be uh, alright, you know, what, but she really doesn't impress. Nice and smooth, the nice, the nice steady, you know, the hydrostatic I want with the fun of. The hydrostatic press me, the way it climbed. I would call it the very drive. I I want to know. And there's like three three ranges in it, one, two and three, like not the six, not the sixteen, not the forty. I think the biggest weakness from what I could gather from just briefly chatting to Ryan is road speed would be an issue. Aye, it should be under par in the road, but sure you could love for that. Well what class claim is what they're trying to do is take the torque from the four cylinder engine. Working the four cylinder engine for its loading duties to real high torque down low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that means that they don't need the same uh, overall horsepower. And their claim is that some of these other shovels, you have to drive them extremely high in the raves to get the benefit of the torque band. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that will help you on the road because oh, you're yeah. chucking more horsepower on it. But like that, that's a four cylinder John Deere engine, four and a half liter. And on the clump, she seems to be fine. Oh, and on the clump, she's going. Uh, they're nice wee whistle off her if you listen to her. There, uh, I'd. Uh, there are now one down the side her. You can open there. Up. I opened that round just to listen to her. And you spend a day on her yourself? Spend a day on her myself, now, aye. Now she's 14 ton. I would like a wee bit heavier, right? But, but you get that's only that's only mid medium range. Yeah, yeah. You get a 14 but ton. For what she is, she's. Uh, she is quite impressive. And she can lift nine ton or so. Ten ton, that fourteen ten. So fourteen is fourteen ton dry weight. That's the category of shovel. The ten stands for ten ton fully up in the bucket before she coops. Aye. <laughs> what I noticed about her was in the the bigger ones like the nineteen fourteen and the the two bigger shovels come as standard with the kinematics we talk about the, the Z system and then the medium range sort of would come more as a standard with a parallel yeah yeah but um, they've spec'd her on the Z I think that was a smart move well definitely uh, I I know if I was buying one that would be the Z and it works a wee bit different to your Volvo it does it helps a wee round uh, it's alright it has a dead spot on it uh, a dead spot compared to your Volvo to be turned the great round too far, and uh, she'll uh, she'll lose her her up and her power now. That's the only downfall I would see. But if you get used to driving the thing, you know yourself. You don't. You don't take it. There. No, you don't take it there. A um, few wee features on her as well. Return to they call it return to dig or whatever. But you know if you're coming down off the clump, you can hit a button and she'll automatically go back to that level yeah, yeah, yeah. in case you have. But now the Z has its weaknesses as well. Parallel would be better, you know, at the end of the day, if you're parallel and you're here and you lift up, she'll stay. Yeah. You know, it's more for finesse, maybe, where as the Z's more for sheer rip and tear. Aye, and bullish. Sure. Sure. Aye. What about diesel? Have you thought, looked at the diesel? I don't know how many litres she holds, but I just tell you, we put 140 or 150 litres of grass and three uh -huh. quarters of tank. Now, that was lighter crow and it was dry, and I know going by the Volvo. I would put 140, 150 acres out in the tank, but it's all down the crop, so it's wet, you can put that through the two tanks, you know. She'd find it a wee bit easier. Ah, she has a wee bit, but don't know why later she holds, you know. Yeah. She seemed easy enough in diesel now, so she does. But I think if you're working on them hard, they all will. If you were changing your shovel, and this is something that you might be looking at doing, because you've had your Volvo now for five years. Or five so. years, and she was, what, 30 years old before you had it? Ah, uh, she's nine year old coming, I said, nine year old. So we first seen her at Donkey Contracts, we had her against the 435 for the bit of fun. 
but like I get it now your 1410 class Torian is not in the same weight category but no. would it make you want to try a bigger one? I would want to try I'd love to get around the bigger one before you uh, I still will be leading my Volvo with how you drift so you just do that I don't know. You drove a 435 a few times this year. Yeah. Where would you envisage it in the middle of it all? Not there. <laughs> You're going to laugh, I got to say. I don't know if we're on with JCB Eller, but uh, I think that their class would be a frontrunner thing. And that's the thing. Why are you doing? See, visibility. The visibility, and she would be better hydraulics. Then you've got, you're comparing a parallel linkage. I will, I'll show you linkage. That. But yes, I'm with you. You would need that. But I, I, yeah, that's fine. But you're, you're, you're not thinking grip, so calm. But I do think that shovel there needs a bigger butt rake on it. I think the butt rake of that class is, is too uh, wee for it. Too wee and not strong enough uh, toes. No. <laughs> There's a bent toe on her, we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, obviously it was bent before you used yeah, got yeah, it, yeah, like, yeah. you know. <laughs> but David from class was up with you, a wee, a wee run on it. Yeah. And, uh, he helped you with a few wee settings and he it said, made a difference. Oh, did I? He, 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 the language, he, the language was flying and we slowed it down and you had more power, you know, the better visibility here. Now, the only thing I run the class shovel down is your cab. I am a wee man, big man. It was a man size. <laughs> so, my legs, you can't get the legs right the way you can. Your JCB would have a better cab and your Volvo would have a better cab. That was the only thing I would say. Ryan there will be alright, he's short of the leg. That's the only thing I would say I can see. Not big man friendly. No. What? Well, that, that's us both out. That's us out of the land of that. <laughs> well, I suppose at the end of the day, it's still a seest on a lever. What is that? And um, there's, there's... interestingly enough, that one's a deer engine. I, I didn't know that, I the, thought it was Libra. The, 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 no, a Libra engine and the bigger one, and it's still four-cylinder, interestingly. But that is the thing, and people think that about four-cylinders and six-cylinders and all, and I was I was trying to explain there, and I was explaining this to you on the phone one day we were chatting. We had the new Holland Dynamic Command T6175, which is the, the biggest offer in the four-cylinder turbo. This year we had the terracotta painted one, which was the... For the, the, the lowest model. My young boys say that. I know your young boys love that, but uh. not, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but well, or am I? <laughs> but the T6 180 is the smallest in the six cylinder range. Yeah. And the same two and a half thousand gallon tanker, the four cylinder, that was able to go up the lane, the hill, and the lane faster. I maybe just wait their torque. Torque, up. come on. You, but, when you're on that. That's what they're trying to do with these engines. They're trying to focus on the torque so we can run it at the lower revs. And you do hear that when you're listening to it. They're running it at the lower revs and trying to get the best out of it. So, like, technically, it's only 155 horse. What horse is your JCB 435? 240. 240, so you're, you're not. That's a, a, that's a, uh, you're 90 horse less. Yep. Uh, I think it's, two, it's 200. Ah, it is. That's 200 plus, that is, certainly. But now, you were late this year and you did look at the new Volvo as well. I did. I drove the Volvo around the boys' yard. Got my knights. I know. RNG McKnight, aye. But that's lovely. Oh, that's. But they've even made improvements since Gavin's. Oh, they have, aye. They've got better, they have different things. I think they're more into the market, the agro market. Forehand, they weren't really interested. They really nice to have a shovel there. But, but they all could get ballers, I know. Well, like, this is just what I was going to say. The reason you've been looking at these shovels is, um, yours, you know, they're not faultless. No, they're not. Definitely not. Mine's king baller, like I had a bit of transmission. But that's the only baller, Skip. Yep. That's that. But it was pretty major. Aye. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I done it, I done it right. The class Torian has impressed me. But do you know what I'm going to tell you in today's modern world? Now, you're running a fleet of 145s here, and they're still one of the last of the old school type trackers in the sense of clutch, change gear, push a button and tap the trailer. And I lent you the, the 650 class that we're working with McCarthy's and class on and took it for a couple of days and you were struggling to get onto it and it was only then I realised that when you started to understand the tractor and understand the different characteristics and the different jobs and getting it set up the way it's meant to be set up, it actually became a lot oh, yes. easier oh, to drive and that's what got me, that's got me really thinking. 
and it was the same even with the shovel. All this modern technology, it's only as good so, as yeah. what we can put into it. Yeah. And you've seen there yourself, you've got this uh, class shovel there now, and you had to um, literally had to you know get the fella out make a few adjustments and you're probably going from i can't get onto this shovel at all now we're flying with a shovel and it makes me wonder what was it like in the demo or two it was doing before i with somebody else <laughs> and that you could be chatting to that person and you might maybe well fall in with the person that had that demo going oh, i didn't like that shovel at all it was too fast and it had no part pushing up the pit and you're standing there going oh, actually Aye. That wasn't a problem, no, no. and it's all in how it's set. It's all in how you get machines, and that's the thing about today's modern world tractors. When we were pups, you put the right foot to the floor and you change the gear, and away you go. And that was that. Now it's all, you know, operating your engine drip and how you do this here. And I hooked the class tractor onto the wagon. I went out to do a few loads myself. I felt it was very, very slow. You know, just at the forward speed. As soon as it hit the hill, I felt I wasn't getting away. We were crawling, and. Um, you know, went in just the, the, the percentage drip in the engine, which means she allows it to come back to a certain engine speed before she slows down the transmission. And then it's finding the sweet spot, it's knowing the sweet spot of where the wagon, PTO and all can still operate. And when you go from say a thousand RPM and you allow that engine to come down say 20%, or you're allowing that to come down to 830, 40, 50 RPM on a hill, and she, before she slows the transmission down, the extra difference that can give you in forward speed is amazing. But I'll tell you one thing it does do, it makes the implement always, you're always able to run that machine. So there's a lot, whereas before we just wait to the engine and the tractor Jeez. starts the yeah, day, we back, go down in gear. Uh, and once we get that all sussed out and get going with the wagon, I thought the class was very, very good on the, uh, on the, on the, and I'll tell you one thing about the class the tractor, grip. the grip is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, you're ex Yeah. You're a Renault family. Yep. I, I, How do you feel about that? I, I like Renault. <laughs> uh, the, the, I don't, I don't know if we're on How's the rest of the Enterprise going? I go well, hey I Crushing and ever Crushing all and tearing away. So our... You changed one of your Attaches and bought a Cabalgo. Cabalgo, aye. Zero tail swing. That seems to be a good dinger now. Yeah. Really, really lovely and smooth. Well, smooth, aye. Um, a great cab and a great room. Yeah. The driver likes it, that's, that's the main thing. And uh, seems to be a good job now. Uh, the great hydraulics on her too. Uh, but again, it was a big change to move away from the... I it was, I. From uh, the I, I want to ask my brother in said to me about the day about them, and we looked at them, and then we were quite shocked. You know, uh, just you never... Sometimes you take, sometimes you're better sat and then we look around you. Your one four fives have done well. Oh, real well. I think, you had, I think your first, you had your first bit of trouble we won this year. Yep, that's the first. That's the first bit of trouble yep. you have had with it. And even at that, it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't a major fact, you know, really. You're direct, right? No, easy. Uh, I, I'd never hell. I won't be a fan of drink. Them other boys all like that. Now, I said that's all along. I'm a gear lever man. But the drink drive, something you find clap come off and done something in the, a burn or something and the uh, transmission over now but it was a gearbox out job a gearbox out job I, it definitely was David. but that 
the brother likes that now for uh, for bail way and stuff now. I think your one four fives have done really well, and they're fit for want of a better word. I know they're they're they're, right and, uh, <laughs> they're good going trackers, you know, for what they are. You know, uh, they're brave. And, uh, uh, we're all there, aren't we? We did video the Dino Day, James. <laughs> <laughs> they had to. That's a new home country, so they had to show their. But they did. Um, they did do real well now, and they're comfortable. They're all comfortable. The man likes them. You're doing well. Like there's a trainer there. Like, the man drives out so here. It says mother and father's away in holidays. That's Alex trainer. Like, oh, so aye, that's the one that does them more. Aye. They got a trainer there. Them came in the end of November three years ago. And I suppose that year's that's September. Almost well, three years ago. I know where else. We're, we're, we're about two months short of three years. I think there's. I know, don't, that's a, they're over 6,000, they've got 6,500, 6,700. Not far off, I don't mean. Aye, they'll be 7, 7,500 hours before they'll be 7,500 hours. 7 hours before for the three year old, you know. They've done a lot of work. The, the heavy not, work, but. It's all heavy work to do. Because if it's not on a 16 ton trailer and they wear 14 tons, they're now 16 tons. Yep. Um, or two more, is it? Not that, or it's three and a half, or all three thousand. Three three thousand old tankers. They'll maybe, they'll maybe get a wee upgrade shortly. Someday, you? maybe, aye, you never know. And you need a little loader as well. I need a loader so first. I, or, I was chatting to Willie Heron at the Plough match last week, so I ordered you a tri axle little loader. To I need to get your shirt and going. <laughs> I ordered you a 30 axle load loader and I told him you wanted it. You were very annoyed at Eddie Gamble get these by 4,000 gallon tankers. <laughs> so I tell him, you needed three, you'd be one better than that. All right, you know, I'd work with two of them anyway. Another two and a half. <laughs> so they're a lovely tank. You see Eddie's oh, big oh, tankers? Yeah, right, yeah, so, that's what I was waiting to see how Eddie got on. Then we'll, we'll go from there. What's your favourite all time trainer? I love that 145 there, that one over there. That's my trainer. I love that trainer. Now, I'll tell you what I would love. A 7, 6, 10, 4 wheel drive, man. Uh, serve, does it work? Does it serve you yeah, as a series 3? I would love one of them there, just to have someday. I think, I think that's one of the loveliest stuff with trainers has made. But isn't it funny? All oh, that's John Deere talk and New Holland's not for you, but your heritage and your heart is still lies Ford. in Ford. Yeah. That's that's like, yeah, you know I got I got the candies there and, uh, and that's the same, we're fifty years cotton silage and that's fifty years dealing with candies. And my father's dealt a whole lot with that more than I have. And my heart not saying my heart's your always soft point, you know, for it because it's been a lifetime friendship there. But that's the Ford. But I think to see young ones nowadays, they, they don't realise what it's like to drive. And my father would be saying that to me too, you know. If you had to work what he had worked, but years ago, uh selling my father said to me growing up, son, if you hired what I ploughed, oh, yes. I used to tell him I worked in the mental system. One pass. <laughs> <laughs> and he never liked that answer. He always goes, son, if you hired what I ploughed. 